We now welcome our race winning driver and crew chief, driver of the number 41 Monster Energy Haas Automation Chevrolet, Kurt Busch. Also joined by his crew chief, Johnny Klausmeyer. Gentlemen, congratulations on a, a great win today. Uh, Kurt, take us through those final few laps. Well, thank you. Um, it's, um, it's an amazing feeling when you get to drive into Victory Lane and, and you, any track, any weekend, at any time. And it's very special because it makes you think of all the hard work that everybody at uh, Stuart Haas Racing put into this car. And to be in position, you know, that's what it's all about. And Johnny Klausmeyer called a perfect race to, you know, gamble on the fuel a little bit. But he also, um, you know, gave me the ball. He's like, hey, we're two laps shy. Um, go get it for us. And so as a driver, you know, we were restarting, I think, 10th at that point. Uh, we had to work through some of the the guys that stayed out, which you knew uh, or I knew we, we could get those guys because, you know, they were really gambling on fuel. Uh, but just overall, um, you know, a great team effort. It's, uh, it's a lot of work at the shop, but each week we've been in position this year so far. Um, and we haven't quite sealed the deal, and so today we did, and we're going to enjoy this win. Johnny, I believe this is your second uh, stint atop the pit box there, uh, so you're batting 500 there. Uh, tell us a little bit about when you're making that call, kind of what's going through your mind as you're developing that strategy. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was nerve-wracking, but, uh, you know, it and all ended up working out really good. Um, we just... We knew that we were racing guys on fuel that had the same engine horsepower, Hendrick power than us, so we knew that we should be in the same uh, sequence as them. Um, Kurt did a great job of saving it. We just kind of kept him informed on everything that was going on, and he took it and ran with it, and it was great. Kurt, before we go to questions, I just want to let you know this uh, win does move you into a tie for 25th on the all-time series wins list uh, with NASCAR Hall of Famer Rex White. So pretty cool thing there. And we'll open it up to questions now for our race running uh, driver and crew chief. You'll raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. We'll start back there in the back and work our way forward. Joseph Walken, FrontStretch.com. As he said, it ties you with Rex White. What do you think this does for your legacy? Uh, it's, it's something that you don't think about. Um, but it's nice to to have the acknowledgement to be in a, an elite group, but it takes an elite team and, it, and an effort that um, that you have to have as a driver in this day and age to be in position to win. And so far this year on the Haas Automation Monster Energy Chevy team, we've been on one side of the yellow or one side of the restart at the end of a bunch of races. And, you know, it, it's, it sits there and it wears on you a little bit, but then you got to focus, 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 and allow the races to unfold. The more often that uh, you're in position to win, the more chances at winning you're going to have. And throughout my career, I've always enjoyed racing here at Pocono. It's a fun racetrack. It's a different racetrack. It, uh, it has road course rhythm. It has oval characteristics. But then it challenges engine builds. It challenges new setups because we race here, you know, in June, and then we come back here quickly at the end of July. And then uh, we don't come back again for another 10 months. And technology changes so quickly. So Pocono is always a fun place to go to to challenge uh, the team and to find that right strategy to win. And it's, uh, it's an unbelievable feeling. I'm going to enjoy it. this one just like I've enjoyed the other 27. We're going to go to Bob, then Joe. Um, Pockers, ESPN. Is it any different having Johnny in your ear telling you to save fuel versus Tony? Just because you would worked with Tony for so long, you might know kind of what, what he means when he tells you, you know, you have to save so much. I don't know what it was. His voice was way more calming than Gibson. Uh, <laughs> when you have an engineer calculating your fuel, I mean, I mean, it's a calculator. I know Gibson can do it just the same. But it, when you have a new guy uh, or somebody different, and you're not at your full strength, there's something that happens to everybody on the team. Everybody pulls harder. Everybody digs in a little bit deeper. And not having Tony Gibson here today, I know everybody gave that much more. And this is a win for Gibson. He's assembled this group of guys. And Klaus Meyer took over, and it was a perfect um, called race. Um, we had a great setup to maintain speed. And when he says you're two laps shy, I'm like, um, Great. All right. Well, let's see what we can get. And I knew he was going to gamble. I knew I needed to do my best to um, preserve the fuel and to deliver the win. We'll go to Joe and then Jeff. 
Joe Person with the Charlotte Observer for either or both of you on that fuel preservation. Jeff Gordon in the booth said he thought, based on what he was hearing, that you guys actually were idling down or shutting off the engines at the end of the race in one and three. Is that accurate, or did you do them in, in all three turns? Yeah, I don't think we can give them all our secrets. Yeah, no, we can't give them our secrets, no. <laughs> Jeff Gordon's pretty smart. He, he, he's a champion driver. He knows how to save fuel. For us, we did what we needed to do. Uh, they'll pull up the data to see the things that, um, that I did, and we're going to learn from this, too, on which sequence is better to save fuel. There's about three different uh, like game plans when it comes to saving fuel. And I thought, though, two laps at a Pocono track, that's seven miles. Seven miles is, is pretty far. <laughs> and so you got to do what you can to save fuel. But Hendrick Engines put us in this position. We have a great engine tuner uh, that, that is always looking at certain things on certain weekends. And Pocono, you always know that fuel could come into play just like it will next week at Michigan. We'll go to Jeff, then Dominic. Jeff Gluck from USA Today for Johnny. Uh, Kurt said your voice was pretty calm. Were you that calm inside? Did you have nerves of steel up there? What were you feeling during those last final laps? Yeah, I was definitely nervous. I mean, you know how the deal goes. It, you can be hero or zero really quick. Uh, I knew once we took the white flag, we would be in good shape. And uh, once we got to that milestone, I felt pretty confident in it. We're going to go over here to your left, to Dominic, then to Zach, then we'll come up front to Scott and Chris. <coughs> Dominic, how to go on the racingexperts.com. Question for both of you guys. For Kurt, of your 28 career wins, is it possible to say where this one ranks on the totem pole? And for Johnny, if the win hasn't sunk in yet, uh, when do you think it will sink in for you? I mean, it's it's a win, and it's special. And any time you get a chance to enjoy a win at the Sprint Cup level, it's hard to rank them against other ones. Um, but there's you know certain tracks I've done well at in my career, and Bristol's one of them. And uh, New Hampshire, I have three wins. Atlanta, I have three wins. And now at Pocono, I have three wins. And so it's nice to have the confidence when you come to a track and then you have a great team that's pulling together, you know, to, um, to work, pick up the workload of Tony Gibson missing. So this one, it makes it more special because we're missing our crew chief and we've got a first timer that got a win today. We'll go right here in the middle to Zach. Yeah. Um, I mean, it hasn't really sank in yet, but you know, I'm sure tonight it will be. Like I said, the biggest thing for me is just the, the relief of being into the chase, you know, with one win. I think that's, that's huge. Like I said, we've been so close. It's just a matter of getting that off our shoulders. And now we can just build our notebook for the chase. It'll sink in when they roast them at the shop on tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go right here in the middle to Zach, then we'll come up from the Scott. Zach Sterniola with the Pocono Record. Uh, for you, Kurt, when you're in the car, obviously I know – uh, you had faith in Johnny's call there, but how stressful, if, if at all, was it during that last run, uh, knowing that you were short, and uh, was there ever a, a doubt in your mind that you would get there to the finish? There, there really wasn't a doubt. I can honestly say that Klossmeyer gave me the confidence. He kept giving me numbers. I kept finding ways to think that I was saving fuel. Um, I kept checking the mirror, kept checking my lap time on the dash. I felt like a cook in a kitchen trying to beat the buzzer and not get chopped at the end of the show with as many things as I felt like I was managing, but the spotter helped, Klossmeyer helped, um, my past experience on saving fuel helped, and it all turned into a win here at Pocono. It feels great. We'll go up front to Scott and then Chris. Scott Walsh from the uh, Scranton Times Tribune. For Kurt, uh, could you just kind of describe uh, the, the, what turned out to be the pass for the lead? Um, I think it was uh, or, or, or on, the re on the restart there was – got together a little bit with uh, with Chase and Dale uh, in turn two, and then you wind up passing I think Dale in turn one. Can you just kind of describe that little sequence there that got you to lead? It, um, it, it was definitely an exciting restart. Um, those Hendrick guys, they came with a different second gear ratio that um, I know all about now, but I didn't have it <laughs> today. And what it did is it allowed them to jump ahead, and then by the time we got into turn one, I could choose easily left lane or, or right lane and Chase Elliott wanted to block me coming off of turn one and I said okay kid here we go you know if you're gonna if you're gonna block you're gonna get a pretty good head of steam here down the back straightaway and then you're gonna have to decide what you want to do with it and I expected to get to his outside and it didn't turn out and then he made a mistake washed up uh, the 88 checked up and I was able to get them both and so 
again, that gets back to what I answered about earlier. We've been on one side of the restart or the other um, at a bunch of races at, at, towards the end here, and I'm just glad that the restart panned out perfectly for us. But Chase Elliott did a, f a phenomenal job. He's a smart kid. Uh, Dale Jr. swept both these races last year. I knew we were in good company up front, and we just needed a little bit of luck on our side, and we found it. We'll go to Chris Knight. Chris Knight, catchfans.com. Kurt, with the victory today, you guys head to Michigan International Speedway next weekend where not only you're the defending champion, but you're taking the momentum with a new package. Uh, how do you feel about going to Michigan next weekend? Yeah, we definitely need to stay focused. Um, with this package next week, it, it could be the future of our sport. And you always want to start off on a good foot when you have less downforce with the, the splitter change and the rear spoiler change. But I got one of the best in the business with, with Klausmeyer, uh, the read that we have from one another. And I think we took a great step moving forward this weekend on understanding each other, understanding the cars, the setups, the tires. And it was fun to, um, to work with him today and calling the race. And so we'll, we'll see. I mean, it, it, last year's win with the new aero package this year doesn't mean much. We've got to go there with an open mind next week and, a, and attack for the future. Got one more over here from Jeff. I might have totally missed this, and you guys may have already said this. Did, did anybody talk to Gibson yet? Did you guys text him or call him in victory lane or anything like that? I was trying to get him on the phone um, before we walked in, so he's going to be the next phone call. But I talked to Gene Haas in victory lane, and Johnny and I posed for a picture um, when we had the sprint hats on with like a, a – we're going super, yeah, to superimpose Gibson in between both of us. Gentlemen, congratulations on a great win. Thank you. Thank you.